There we go. We're live. We are. Cool. Yeah. Live yet again. It's another episode of The Dream Show. I was thinking it's not Tuesday night dreaming. It's The Dream Show. Not anymore. It's yeah. It's dream end of Sunday. Friday Dream Show. Yes. It's Dream Sunday. Last Friday right. of the month Dream Show. Last Friday of the month. And mostly, most of the time, and sometimes on time. Yeah. But sometimes on time. On time. But not today. always, always willing, always. sometimes on time. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, if you're if you're just tuning in, uh, thanks for thanks for joining in. And um, we go live the last Friday of each month and uh, interpret. Uh, there's Elizabeth. Wonderful. You're here. We should we should uh, probably what? share this. I already did, man. I gotta do it. I'm ahead of I'm ahead of the game there. I already did. Uh we go live the last Friday of each month and interpret your dreams and answer your questions to the best of our ability. Um and so here's the the deal is post your dreams, post your questions in the comments. We get through everything we can. Our goal is not so much to interpret the most dreams, uh, but our goal is to help you understand the process we go through to interpret the dream. So that you yourself would become uh, an interpreter, proficient, proficient, proficient to interpret yeah. your own dreams. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's it's like uh, at at least you'd be like. Um, I guess you would say you would say proficient in interpreting your own dreams. You would say competent to say. See, we competent. Have to be- yeah, competent. You're able to at least yeah. pull some meaning from it. Um, the the uh i'm just thinking of the difference between jacob and joseph right mm-hmm. joseph shares his dream with the sun the moon and the stars bowing down to him and jacob yeah. interprets the dream so jacob has some rough understanding he's comp you could say he's competent right right he's not maybe he's not like joseph who pulls out all kinds of meaning when you get into pharaoh's dream the cupbearer the baker this kind of stuff but yeah. but his dad was proficient and and so if if uh you know there's only two guys in scripture that are called dream interpreters yeah yeah and that's joseph and daniel and then you have i've been um, reading daniel he's he is fascinating he's, he's fascinating that's that. right and daniel was constantly asking for help in interpreting yeah. right i like, didn't i wanted to know what this thing meant so i went and asked what does this thing mean so he's always well, asking and, and i love help. how daniel's story is so much about so the people of the people of Yahweh have been exiled. And you got to think, you know, if you're one of those people at that time, we're that's done. It's over for us. Yeah, that's right. And yet the demonstration is no it's not. I'm yeah. with you. Even though you're gone, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you in the fire, I'm with you in dream interpretation, I'm that's with right. you in in speaking to the leaders. You you wouldn't you wouldn't be the people you could you refuse to be the people that nations would come to and meet with. Yeah. So I'm sending you to nations and and they will meet with you yeah. and they will be and they will be affected by you. It's just fascinating. And Daniel does that by interpreting dreams. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's to me, that's <clears throat> of all the things you could do to demonstrate that the that Yahweh is the 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 creator God, the one above all others. Right. He speaks in through people's dreams to do that. Yeah, that's and, right. And so when we think, well, dreams aren't really all that significant, then you got to read Daniel. Yeah, that's okay. right. Look how it changed the course of a nation. Yeah. Very, yeah, very that's right. Yeah. And that's same right. thing with Joseph. I mean, yeah. uh, where it changed the course of a nation. So we see the significance of dreams when, Yahweh is looking to reach the nations with with his great love. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Wonderful. Right, so I, I did my thing. That's that's wonderful, Dad. I I really appreciate that. That's that is you know, like like it it seems sometimes what God does seems illogical, right? Um Lori, uh, yes, we are. Just go ahead. Yeah, go. yeah. So the deal is um wonderful to see everybody. We'll keep talking about this in a second, but wonderful to see everybody. Veronica, mm-hmm. Renee, Jim, Sean, awesome to see you and, Sh- and Sherry and uh and Laura. Wonderful to see everybody. We are we are definitely taking dreams. Um, so the deal is post your dreams in the comments, post your 
questions in the comments. Um, the dreams that we typically ask for are shorter dreams. Otherwise, yes. it'll take us the whole time to do a yeah, long dream. You know Renee, so it probably is that's too true. long. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's probably right. Probably Renee. But, 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 but we love Renee. That, yeah. We would say it's probably very interesting. Just like Yeah, that's said. right. That's right. Yes. Now, we won't have um, disagree with you on that. Yeah. So, so post your, post your dreams and your questions in the comments. And we'll, what our, our goal in this whole thing is to help you understand the way that we break a dream apart. And uh, so where I'm right in the middle of running a dream mentorship where we uh, privately meet with a small group and, and for two hours work, work privately to do that with a group, with a small group of five to 10. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, we, we're doing all kinds of training. So um, where our heart is to help you interpret dreams, not so much to be the people that interpret your dreams and um, not, but th with that said, like, like not everybody can be Daniel. Not everybody can be Daniel, but God does will use you to influence people way beyond your means or your thought about how competent you are at doing it. And we see even even Joseph's brothers had insight in a dream into Joseph's yeah. dream. Right. No, so they got it. They got even it. his brothers who rejected he Joseph. It. That's right. They didn't like it, but they got it. Yeah. What what they wouldn't have seen, and this is where this is where culture gift and training intersect. And then hindsight also a little bit is that hindsight's always helpful. They were going to be bowing down to him yeah. over an issue of wheat 20 years in the future. Yeah. So they did bow down to him over an issue. Of wheat. And then with Jacob and Joseph's dreams, the sun, the moon and the stars, the, the whole religious system of Egypt bowed down to Joseph at one right. point, which would be the sun, the moon and the stars, all their, their pantheon of gods was based on astrological signs. Yeah. So, um, so it all came true. So it all came true, but there's this intersection of culture, training, and gift. And, and you know, you get some people that are incredibly gifted at dream interpretation, like, like a John Paul Jackson before he passed away, right? And so we're, our goal is not to make everybody like a John Paul Jackson or to even say that we're even close to being that competent, but we can at least look and help bring some understanding of what the father's speaking and help you come to a, a level of understanding there too. And, and we, we appreciate the giftedness and, and it's, you know, just being near a gifted person like that can, can be, and, and learning from them can help us to find ways of see, to see things that we couldn't see ourselves. Yeah, that's right. So that's Absolutely. Why, that's yeah. why things like John Paul Jackson's training that he put together, even though it was long and it was long and arduous. If you've arduous, taken it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, or if you've taught it, it's long and arduous too. Yeah, it, it's it had, you know, it, it, and for you know, a lot of people would take it and say, "Okay, I'm lost. I, I I just can't do this. I don't know. I mean, I've taken the class and now I don't know what to do." Um, but there's also a lot of people that said, "Okay, I'm going to find a way to to engage with this." And, yeah. Yeah. And doors opened up. So yeah, it does. That's it does right. help. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. Well, good morning, Jim from Missouri. Yeah, are wonderful. You, does Jim live in Missouri or are you just visiting? Oh, oh he must live in Missouri. Okay. Well, um, the uh and and happy post Thanksgiving fog to everybody. Right. Happy yes, Black Friday. Black Friday, yeah. Black Friday you know, sales and deals. I know what you'll be doing. You'll be on with one screen, you'll be on with us, and that the other screen the other screen, screen you'll be yeah, shopping, yeah. doing some online. And if you shopping. don't have another screen, you'll have to shop for one on Black Friday. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's right. That's deal. right. Yeah. In Canada, we had Thanksgiving a month and a half ago. So and see, that's just wrong. It is. It is wrong. But we had some friends in town last weekend and had a Thanksgiving dinner with them because okay. we missed Thanksgiving since we were in Singapore. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, um, so anyway, and I smoked the turkey in my pellet grill. So, you know, it feels like a very Southern thing to do. I should have been there at your place, Dad. Did yeah. you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Absolutely. Yeah. Way more, uh, way more food than anybody could eat. <laughs> I still have turkey yeah. soup in the fridge. Got on really a, good got on a nice soup. bike ride. Um, oh, nice! A couple of games of uh, of croquet. Oh, it's supposed and, to snow today here, so yeah. we don't do croquet in 
November. Yeah, not snowing here. <laughs> it doesn't even, yeah, looking out yeah, there. Yeah. No, no, not even going to yeah. look like snow. That's right. Oh. All right. So we do have a question here from Elizabeth, which looks kind of like an interesting question. She said, I had a dream where I had a big bump sore on the bottom of my foot. I popped it, drained it, <laughs> and then peeled the dead skin off my foot. I believe the dream means I have an infection affecting my walk journey that I will clean out and remove. But my question is, the next day in real life, a bump has developed on my toe that does affect me walking. Does that have any significance? Isn't that interesting that things like that happen? That's right. And by the way, I, I love her butterfly for her Facebook character. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, does it have any significance? So the, the, does the event the next day have any significance? The actual event the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Mimicking the dream. Yeah. And I, I so the first off is her interpretation. Let's just look at her interpretation, okay. right? Yeah. Um, where she okay, so pops, big, drains, yeah. and uh, peeled off the dead had, skin, the, the old stuff that wasn't alive any longer. Yes. So the dream means I had an infection affecting my walk journey that I'm that I'll clean out and remove. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, there's there are some it's a, a so it's not I wouldn't say a, an infection. Yeah. Um, and I would say it just what you said there. It's a it's a painful spot. It's a sore spot. Impacting your walk. Yeah. It's a sore spot. Happened. Yeah. Impacting your walk. Yeah. yeah. So an infection is more serious than just a sore spot. So. Um, uh, you know, and it's it's degrees of severity with an infection. So I don't know if I'd use the word infection. That's all. It wasn't but, but, an infection that was um, that that was uh, threatening the use of the foot. Right. Yeah. It was more of an inconvenience that made things difficult. Yeah, and Painful. caused caused yeah. pain depending on how on um, on where you stepped. Right. Exactly. So so that's that. So but but in terms of the gist of what Elizabeth is saying, um that she's she's had a there's been a sore spot an infection affecting her walk journey and I, and the only th other thing i change elizabeth in the, your interpretation is that you said that i will clean it out and remove it and i would say that you have been um, yeah. cleaning it out and removing it um so oh, i keep on getting text message notification <laughs> yeah so i i yeah so a sore spot that you've been working through basically right and the dream showing you that Oh, there's been some meticulous care that's helped to um, restore some health to the area that was painful yeah. before. So, so that's what I'd say with that. Um, so, but but with that said, you know, just teasing out some of the nuance there, you you definitely grasped the meaning of the dream and brought light and significance to what happened there. So, um, so I I endorse Elizabeth. Like I said, I, we've been doing this for a long time, so I might just use a little bit of different language, but definitely um, agree with your interpretation. You got it. Um, so the next day, a real life bump has developed on my toe that does affect me walking. Does that have significance? Um, I mean, I guess, I, I guess it could. Let's put it this way. Yeah, go ahead. In case, in case you were wondering, Elizabeth, whether that dream had any significance. Yes. The dream had significance. Yes. Yes. The, the answer is yes, it did. So, the, <laughs> but the question, no, the question is, her question isn't that. Her question right. isn't whether the dream has significance. Uh, no, I, I understand that. In other words, but the question, but you go, if we backward, if we go backwards here. Right. And if you have a dream and you're saying, huh, I wonder if that's really, is affecting me if that those are the kind of things that i'm having to deal with and then you have it right right like okay in case i was wondering hmm i guess yeah. i better deal with this <laughs> yeah yeah so i i guess what i'm i would just say that we don't want to make the dream prophetic in the sense that no. it was prophesying you're going to have a bump that you need to deal <laughs> with right exactly right so does it have significance it can I don't know that I would try and because you here, here's my point. You don't need the bump on your foot to give meaning to the dream. So you don't have to go, exactly. 
right? right? So you don't have to go, oh, I have a bump well, the on dream my stands on its own. It doesn't need that. Yeah, the dream stands on its own, exactly. Does a bump, could a bump on your toe that affects you walking drive home the point of the dream? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And I, and I wouldn't put it past the father to do something like that. Um, or there to be some kind of manifestation that drives a point home. Right. Um, but at the same time, we don't, I, you know, it, it's just, it's easy to read into every single little event and try and impute meaning to it. When well, it's okay. Not. So the, I dreamed my grandmother died. Okay. That's, that's not prophetic necessarily. Most likely not. Right. But, um, if she eventually does die, does that mean that you dreamed that she was going to die? Well, let's look at the metaphor that it, that it uh, um, is working with, rather than this is my prophetic dream. Yeah. Let's see. Yes, that's right. Um, so I just there's a comment on a on one of the other video places from uh, Ernesto. Uh, let me just see. Yes, we can help you with your dream, Ernesto, if you... Is that Ernesto uh, or Chris? No, an Ernesto. Ernesto. Um, okay. Let's see. Here, you just keep going, Dad. I'm just going to send you this real quick. <laughs> okay. So that you can bring it up. We've okay. got a... All right, so i got to have to do something here. All right. You bring... You bring... bring so like... so all, the, all to say uh, with Elizabeth's dream that... Yeah. Um, it, it has great meaning, and I don't know that I would I would read too much into the bump on your foot beyond just going, oh yeah, let's I'm I'm gonna I, I really want to deal with the huh, stuff affecting funny. my walk. Huh, how funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What a coincidence. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's see. Chris Hanger's got a dream there. Yep. It'll have to it, it'll take a little bit. It's He's on YouTube. Oh, it's coming it's through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. <laughs> and then Renee had a question up there about uh, zombies. Where is it? A question. This one right here, Dan. My daughter. My daughter. You see this question, Pops? My daughter often has zombie apocalypse, dream, apocalypse dreams. Usually zombies attacking family or the country, things like that. So um, does, she, does she watch a lot of zombies? Well, that's that's the first question is, is because media can influence what we dream about. What we fill ourselves in with will does is what comes out. Now that doesn't mean there's not, there can be meaning to it. Um, so the, the question is, how old is your daughter? Two is, is she scared of zombies? Is it like a thing that she's dealing with? Three is, does she watch um, what the what's the the Night of the Living Dead or that's an old horror movie I think Walk, the Walking Dead the show uh, that was about zombie you know does she watch things like that that would cause her to dream like that um, and does she does she wake up in a panic and is she afraid in the dreams um, is she is she you know is she running is she afraid for her life or these like calamitous things happening to her. Um, so she's 11. She doesn't know zombie movies or games. Uh, and is she full of faith in the dream? Everything's gonna be okay. Is she scared in the dreams? Um, and no zombie social. Well, Renee, all social media is zombified. So, um, <laughs> Because zombies, because again, we're we're talking. She said an eleven year old, so we're talking about an an eleven year old here, right? These these um, metaphors and dreams tend to be much simpler when kids are younger. Yeah, she's scared in the dreams, um, and so you know, a, a dreams like that. Okay, so when she has dreams of uh, that incite fear and um nightmare so you they basically renee you'd say they're nightmares with um zombies attacking your zombies are attacking something she cares about and they're nightmares right. of that uh, of that ilk right so a dream like that it's not that we go 
let's pull deep meaning out of a child's nightmare. What we can see is maybe some of the things that they wrestle with in terms of their fear. Um, And so also zombies attacking her. Yes. Um, So there's a, there'd be a, a fear that the things that she cares about are going to be hurt. Um, and with a, you know, with a zombie, it's just a zombie is just a, like if, if she was 25, we might say a zombie is dead because it's dead and it's been brought back to life. Right. So it's a, um, you know, sin issues. It's, um, cyclical issues that keep coming back and attacking, but she's 11. So a zombie is just a horror creature that inspires fear. I don't know that I would look too deeply into the metaphor of a zombie to try and say um, that that there's something deeper there outside of there's some fear that she's wrestling with about the things that she cares about, that they're going to be um, impacted. Um, and uh, there we go. Let's get rid of the Uganda thing. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, and that and there's some fear that the things that are impacting the things around her are going to impact her too because there's some of the dreams where they're attacking her so with a dream with dreams like that i would help her walk through the fear not so much understanding the nature of the dreams but let's talk about fear let's talk about some resources and tools that you can use as a as a child to um for like for just for instance we we about a year ago my uh, my daughter she's 10 now so she was 9 she was really wrestling with uh, anxiety at night she she would she would get scared of all kinds of different things it, it was and it was always irrational um mm. uh, you know the, the warning label of something she read and was afraid it was going to happen to her right and and so fear would come over and then she'd have a hard time going to sleep she'd close her eyes and all she could see was the fearful things and all this right so it doesn't work as a parent. I learned this one, by the way, to say, stop it. <laughs> okay. That doesn't work. That's what my dad did to me, but that's not what um, I do to my kids. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so that that doesn't work, right? So um, the goal was over time to help Savannah, my daughter, find tools for her to deal with the fear. When the fear comes, how do you recover yourself? Okay, well, the first thing she needed was she needed uh, snuggles from her dad. That made her feel safe. Okay, well, I had to be willing to adjust my schedule in the moment, you know, what I was doing when yeah. she was trying to fall asleep and just go be with her. So, okay, that, so, but then from there, I don't want, I don't want her to, when she's 40 and she's afraid to need to go snuggle with her dad. So let's figure out how do we give her simple tools that she can address the fear. Okay. Let's think of a memory when you were really happy. It made you feel it made you feel safe and secure. Let's go back to that memory. Okay. So now I'm giving her an exercise to do. Once she's calmed down because she's in my arms, let's think about a memory. Um or if it was sometimes she'd she'd hear she'd hear these really negative things about her. Okay. Well, let's close your eyes dad's right here okay what what have what's something that mom or dad or one of your brothers or someone in your family has said to you that made you feel really special let's think about that right so i'm i'm trying to give her a roadmap to get back from the anxiety and the fear to dwell on something that's good and healthy and holy right so so she doesn't go well fear i'm just bad because i have fear it's no when you have fear perfectly legitimate and normal. How do I recover myself and remind myself who I am? And, and then, and then positive encouragement from her parents. You're, you're, I would tell her all the time, uh, she's my brave girl. Even though she was full of fear, when I look at you, you're my brave girl. So I'm trying to find ways to help her move away from the fear. So, so Renee, the, 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 the response to the zombie dreams where she's afraid is to go, not, well, how do we understand what these mean or what they're pointing to? It's just letting you know maybe a little more insight into what she's afraid of. Her family's going to be uh, impacted. The people she's around, her country, right? Her fellow people, they're going to be impacted. She's going to be impacted. And things are going to go wrong and, and bad things are going to happen to the people she cares about. 
So, okay, so let's go back to the fear. When you're afraid of these things, now let's develop some tools in your life to help you recover yourself. And uh, and so that's that's what how I would respond to something like that. Not so much how do we understand the zombie dreams, but it's it's just helping me to understand some of the source or the outworking of the fear. And now I need to adjust how I parent based on that. So I hope that's uh, helpful, Renee. And and it's a work in progress. You know, we've we've been working with Savannah for almost the last year, and it's way better than it was back in January. That's really when it started to kick up a lot. Um, but there's still moments. There's still moments. And but she's way quicker to recover herself now because she has some good resources and she knows that we're there to um, to care for her. Yeah. We so train, you're always in. We give skills to our children. We train. yeah yeah. There's it's there's always like with kids. It's always like the thing is we want the quick fix. I'm not saying Renee does. I'm just saying that that's typically we want the quick fix. And but we're we have to be in it for the long haul. We're I'm teaching her a skill that is going to pay off in a year or in 10 years and uh, not something that's going to immediately address the problem right now. And because let me tell you, it got really annoying when it was happening every single night. And I did not want to lay down and snuggle with her every single night. I wanted her to just snap out of it, stop it. And that was my strategy at first, right? Just but to you did want to snuggle with her all the time. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. It was, it was, um, yeah, Karen, that's a, that's exactly, that's some of the other stuff that we said with Savannah too. See if she can find Jesus somewhere in the dream. Right. Tell her, tell her, okay. In those zombie dreams, look for Jesus. Look, I, I would say to, to our kids, look for Jesus. If you can't find Jesus, look for your dad or your mom. And cause I also know that Jesus uses imagery that's, that we are comfortable with to, to show us who he is in a dream. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, my strategy at first was to reason with her and to, and to use logic to prove that her fears were unfounded. Okay. And that didn't work very well. No. Because no, when anxiety and fear happen, to... there's there's nothing there's nothing logic. logical yeah. about it. Yeah, logic right? doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was something Ron Huxley said actually that helped me. Uh it's irrational fear. Yeah. So okay. That's my strategy has to be different. And I've got to adjust my and once we adjusted the approach, it was, um, uh, it, it was, it went a lot better and yeah. it was a lot more helpful for her. And I was, when I, okay, this is anyway. So yeah, right. long well, answer gonna, to I'm a gonna, short question, but that's right. I'm going to hone you down here. We've got about right. three, four dreams to deal with and we got a half an hour to do it. So we're going to, we're going to get them and we're going to get you. We're going to get Josh going quickly. How's that? All right. So let's right. start with, and it was it Enrico what, from Uganda? Uh, Ernesto. Ernesto. Okay. So we'll start with Ernesto. He's commenting on it on a different place. The video shared. So that's okay. fine. So let's uh, do this. So he's watching from Uganda. And he said, I had a dream when someone was telling me I am to move to several countries. I was to move to Sweden, Netherlands, and Norway, which is kind of interesting. They're all very close to each other. <clears throat> but the same person told me, um, but going to Norway, you won't need a flight. You will just use a bicycle. But he's never moved to any nation from his own country. Yeah. So yeah, well. Him he's going to move. There'll be yeah. a transition. He's got, you're going to go to these other countries that are these places that are foreign to you. Yeah. And and then, but once you get there, the method of transportation will change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this we would call a calling dream. Yeah. It it is um, in a in, in in a general sense too. Yeah. So um, you know, interesting that it's Sweden, Netherlands, and Norway. Right. Those are all. Um, uh, you know, European well, and Norway, yeah, or you know, or Scandinavian, yeah, and the Netherlands, of course, is European, Northern European, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, but I think there's there is uh, connections. There's connections. there's there's connections between the three, and you know, I guess one of the questions I, you don't need to know it, but one of the questions to Ernesto is what is there any connection to you, your family, people that you know. Uh, church community, anything like that, to European nations. 
Um, so trying to figure out the metaphor of it. So what, what might it mean specifically to Ernesto or what do those nations represent to Ernesto? Um, so, cause the question is why Sweden, why Netherlands, why Norway? So, um, if Ernesto, if you, if you can answer that question, that would be helpful. But in a, in a general sense, the, the call on your life is to go to people that you don't know that are foreign to you. So that's the, that's the, the, the call that there's someone telling you you're going, question. yeah, you're going to move. You're going to go to people that you don't know that are foreign to you and that aren't part of your culture, right? Okay. You're going to go. And, and so, so essentially you're the Lord's moving you and he's sending you. That's what, that's the, the person that's telling you would be angelic help, the Lord, the Holy spirit, something like that. That's usually when someone was telling, giving you instruction. Um, you know, that's, that's direction. So the Lord's sending you to a people that you don't know, different culture than you. And um, the the means, it's going to be something you do that's intensely personal. That's, the, that's a bicycle versus a flight. Mm -hmm. No, taking a flight means you're going to be with a whole bunch of people. But taking a bicycle means you're going to be doing stuff that, that is... Myself. It's, yeah. it's stuff that you do, right? It's not something that's part of a big group or anything like that. It's a bicycle, yeah. and it's something that you, that's going to take your effort to get it going. That's a bicycle. You can't, right. like a, a, a plane, you you know put the throttle in and it starts going. A bike, you have to pedal it to do it. So the Lord's calling you to a people that you don't know, to a culture that you don't know, but it's going to take your own effort to get there. And... um uh, yeah, you may be going as a group, but possible be going out on your own at some point. Karen says, "Yeah, absolutely." Um, so, so just because you've never moved, so it's not necessarily a um, a. We can look at Sweden, Netherlands, and Norway as a metaphor. Now, it could be actual. It could be actual, and that's where you go in prayer to the Lord. Are you calling me to move to these places? And you listen and respond to what the Father's saying. If he says yes, or there's other confirmations about it, or you get a call out of the blue from someone there saying, well, you come, you know, those are ways that we would see, well, maybe it's an actual thing, Sweden, Netherlands, and Norway, but in any case, but to respond to the call and go to the people that you don't know, the culture you're not familiar with, it's going to take your own effort to get there. And, or it's going to take some of your personal effort to go, get there. And it's, a, this is about your call and what you, and what you do in your life. Um, so. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Dan? No, I think that's good. Um, you know, I, I think some of the things you then, if you're Ernesto, you look at. So so what we should say, first of all, is that doesn't necessarily mean you're moving to Sweden, Netherlands and Norway. It, it just means that, they're, that these are foreign to you. These are different from who you are, where you are now. Um, but there's a reason that those are mentioned in the dream. Something about them is kind of unique. So whatever your connection is with them or where they are located, you know, on the globe, that sort of a thing. Those are good questions yeah. to ask towards yeah. the dream. And those are things you work out on your own. Yeah. Um, why these three countries and not, you know, three others? Yeah. You know, why, why weren't they in the Southern Hemisphere instead of the That's Northern right. Hemisphere? That's right. You know, but, you know just... Those are good questions that you work out. That's the that's the outworking of how you understand your dream, how you apply it. The application of your dream is to ask those sorts of questions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, very good. Good. Thank you for sharing, Ernesto. And so we we bless you, Ernesto, in in discovering the call of God on your life and pursuing that. Yeah. Now we have uh, Laura uh, Laura Sanders dream and let's see okay i'm gonna i might have to make a couple of changes to it when we're on while we're talking but yeah that's fine you do that okay um let's see if we can get that one up now Nope, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Why does one, it do though. that? Why does it do that? This silly thing. All right, let me. Um, I have to remove it and reshare it. There's just something weird about it. 
You're having technical difficulties. I, I am. Actually. You're such a boomer, Dad. Well, you know, I can't help it. It's where I was born, <laughs> when I was born. You such a boomer. Me. You can mock me, but. <laughs> well, that's what that's what having you as my dad's all about. Yeah, mocking. Yeah, that's <clears> right. <throat> all right, so here we have. So she said she just woke up from a dream that seems significant to me. So let's start here. In the dream, I was leading a prayer meeting. It's the regional prayer meeting we lead at the church we pastor. We usually have eight to nine people, but this time there were new people everywhere. Different ages, men and women, usually only women come to ours, and different ethnicities. I'd say the average age in the room was mid-20s to early 30s, different to the middle aged current middle-aged makeup. Um, one person asked me, who was in charge of this meeting? I told her that our church had made space, but this meeting didn't belong to one group. It was for everyone. I sat down at a table after the meeting. So let's do this here. I sat down at a table after the meeting with a young African-American man, and he was crying. So moved that he had had a hard time talk, that he had a hard time talking. Finally, he got out that God had spoken to him the word Nabi and he didn't know what it meant. After the meeting, no one wanted to leave. There was such expectation ex and excitement in the air. One guy, as he was leaving, was talking to me excitedly. He was driving some sort of RV, not sure what he was saying, but I felt like he and this vehicle was significant to the future of the group. So then I woke up. return that one down. The one guy as he was leaving was talking to me excitedly because there's that's, a, that's another, mm -hmm. uh, another piece, right? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, quick, quick question, um, to Laura. Do you know what the word "nobby" means? I know what it means, but I, does Laura know? I just, yeah. yeah. So, is, is it something that you were familiar with in your dream? Um, so just, just so you, that'd be helpful. Um, yeah, though, and that's not, this is, uh, here, go scroll up. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you've separated into it's essentially three. Right, three, three it's kind of three scenes, but three mm -hmm. separate, all connected, of course. But right. I mean, so it's the, like the the. Go ahead, Dad. You were going to say. Well, so you start with with a an actual event, but this now that this actual event, this this uh, prayer meeting, is not the same as it normally is. Yeah. So something that actually is happening, but now it's happening differently, and it's reaching a different kind of people a different age group and a different and different ethnicity. So this is an interesting, so, so I, I love how dreams take what is and then elaborate on it. And that's what this one is doing. Yeah. So there is prayer that's ongoing, but in your dream, it's affecting a different sort of people. So anyway, that's just, my yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You the, there. That's right. And it is, um, it's, it's more, it's just bigger and better. Yeah, exactly. Right. So right. It, it's, it's what more, you're doing. I want to say it, we could say it's more kingdom oriented. It is. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it is, uh, um, regional, right. And regional, different, different, different ethnicities. ages, different ethnicities. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Lavina's on, so and we then, can do and her then dream. Men and women, as when it's yeah, usually that's women. right, that's right. Yeah. Um, so the Lord's showing you that some of the things you're working on will have broader impact than you think they do, or than you anticipate that they do, and it's going to surprise you, right? That's that first part. Right. Is yeah, exactly, Karen. Expansion is coming. That you're going to impact people beyond beyond where you've been able to impact them now. So it's a prophet, it's a prophetic promise. And and it's even saying that what you're doing now is impacting beyond what you actually think. You know, as well, it's only eight or nine people, but there's greater impact than you think there is. Um, and the second part, sit down a meeting uh, after the meeting with a young African man. So there's two people that you meet after the meeting that have been involved with the meeting. The right. first one says, I heard the Lord say to me, Nabi. And the second one says, I've got an RV and it's significant for the future of the Isn't group. Isn't that funny? Nabi yeah. and RV. Yeah, they rhyme. That's true. Yeah. So, so Nabi is the word for prophet or prophesy in the Old Testament. Yeah. 
Right. It's the Hebrew word for um, one of the Hebrew words for prophet. It's a certain kind of prophet. Yeah, it's a certain kind of prophet. It's a certain style of prophesying yeah. when you look at the the actual Hebrew word. So um, so he hears that. So basically, there's going to be people that the Lord brings into your midst that he's calling to be to prophetic ministry, but they don't understand the call or the nature of the call yet. Yeah. And so so, you know what it means right in the dream, you know what it means. And but he doesn't know what it means. I said, the Lord told me, Nabi, the Lord's called me into prophetic ministry, but I don't know what it is. So God's going to call you to walk with people that are called into prophetic ministry that are called potentially called as prophets. And uh, but they don't know how to express that or what that even looks like. And so there's going to be some training, some mentoring, some discipling that ostensibly. Right. Um, because he doesn't know what it means and you know what it means. So we're reading into that a little bit that you'll be walking with these people because they're at the meeting. Um, and, and that in the context of what you're doing, there's going to be an increased expectation for the Holy Spirit to move. Nothing you cook up, nothing you conjure. It's nothing you have to do special. You just held the meeting. That's yeah. all you did. And the Lord started moving and he was, and he's, and he's, he's calling people out into prophetic ministry the second one, the second part of it, the guy Lee, the guy that was leaving from the meeting, the RV that's significant to the future of the group, right? A recreational vehicle, an RV. It goes places other other vehicles typically don't. An RV. It it and it goes ready. And ready. it go yeah, it's ready to it's ready on a on at a whim to stop and stay somewhere, right? Yeah. It brings all the resources it needs to different areas. So you take an RV and it's like well, we're going to drive the RV eight hours. We're going to camp up in the mountains, right? And you and an RV, you may you may tow a, a, another vehicle with it so you can go around when you're there, right? You've got all your food, all your equipment, everything stored in the RV. So, um, so an RV is the capacity to go. Um, let's get your phone synced to the computer, and it just starts ringing and vibrating on the computer and the phone. It's like. Oh, yeah reject that and then you got to reject it on the phone so anyway so a, a recreational vehicle says that that the 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 move, way the group is going to move the way that the things you're doing are going to move you're already looking at regional impact uh because you hold this regional meeting but in the rv you go to the place right in in your meetings you call people there so yes yeah, fully fully equipped wherever it travels that's right karen so Get ready for an increase. God's going to begin releasing prophetic ministry and calling people into prophetic ministry. And also, he's probably going to begin sending you to places. Maybe not you. Maybe people that are connected with you. That that one's not clear. Get, sending you to places with the equipment to, to impact that place, an RV. Small groups going to places to bring regional impact. So, And, and uh, the reason we can say it this way, just so people know, is... <clears throat> In this dream, you see, I was leading a prayer meeting. It's the regional prayer meeting we lead at the church we pastor. Yeah. This is something that is about her and the and the organization that she's involved with. Because so so then we can take the rest of the dream and say, okay, it has significance to what's going on currently. It's yeah. speaking to what currently is going on. Um and, and that's how we know. That sets us up for the rest of the dream right there. Yeah. That's right. It gives us what we would say. It gives us the context of the dream. Yeah. That's right. I said, it's a great dream, Laura. It is. It really and is. So we just, we just bless your leadership as you, as you try and navigate the way forward and the things that you're involved with and uh, the things that God's doing. And, and again, not to lose heart that, whether eight people show up or 80 people show up, uh, that the father's calling you and he's speaking to you. And, um, and we just bless you to be responsive to that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Lavina, you still, are you still on? And then yeah. we can, we'll drive. We, we could do we'll Lavina's dream through. and then we'll, um, jump up here to Chris's dream. And then I think that'll be all we can do. today. Wonderful. Yep. All right. So Chris, stay, stay with us. <clears throat> And let's see, I'm, I got to They've changed the way they do this.
It's just weird. All this technology. All right, I'm I'd be I'd be ready here in just a second. There we go. Oh, let's make it a little bigger because you're blind. Just because of your, because you need to see it. Oh, I can see it. It's on. I got a. Oh, you got like 90 monitors. Oh, that's right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in this dream, Lavina says, and we should s state that Lavina is not living in the United States. <clears throat> no, no, no. Uh, she's not. In this dream, we were at the Sunday service. I was surprised to see Pastor Cyril wear open sandals to church. I told Ben, and Ben is her husband. Her husband. In the dream, uh, never in his life has Pastor worn open sandals to church. Next, I saw the grocery shop owner of Rajesh Stores. Did I say that right? Rajesh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that's close enough. And his yeah. family in the church. He looked up to me and Ben and said my tumor had disappeared. I am healed of cancer, and he started praising Jesus. This family lives in the same building as us, and they are unbelievers. Ben bent down and touched his feet to check, and there was blood on Ben's hand. Ben felt his feet and said the tumor had disappeared. We looked around for Pastor Cyril, but he and the whole church was on the other side of the hall. We were wondering, how do we inform Pastor Cyril that he is on the other side, as he is on the other side, end of the dream? Um and, uh, and so what she says, in real life, Pastor Cyril, for the first time, wore open Crocs to church because he had a swelling in his feet. So we have, we have two things in here, by the way, that we uh, want to pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, um, it is, where is that? Oh, <clears throat> It's the feet thing. Oh, oh, okay. We got sorry. We got Pastor Cyril with the feet, and we got the feet here. So we got a repeating theme that we want to pay That's attention right. to. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's right. Um a few different things with this stream. Uh, and I I mean, I know all these people quite well uh in this stream. So uh uh anyway, her her just for context sake, her husband pastors the uh, the church with Pastor Cyril. Um, so Ben is a pastor, uh, uh, pastor as well, and they're very close to. Um, then the the they would just be within a couple days to a couple weeks. Karen, this dream is pretty um, pretty recent. So okay. yeah. Um, so and and Cyril's uh, quite old at this point. Uh, so you know having physical issues like that would not necessarily be abnormal. Um, so I, I don't know that they're, con I'm not that sure they're connected. I'm just not ready to comment on that. I'm still thinking about that. Uh, so in the dream, the first part of the dream, she sees uh, Cyril wearing open sandals to church and he's never done that before. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And, and Lavina recognizes that something's different about how he's walking in here. Exactly. Something's different about how he's walking in here. And and it's essentially saying there's an openness I haven't seen before. Yeah. Right. That's the open sandals, right? There's something's different about how he's walking into in here. Yeah. When you wear sandals, that's more dressed down than actual shoes, right? This is more relaxed, familiar, and comfortable. There's yeah. something different about how he's walking in here. And this is this is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. There's something different about how Cyril's engaging with the community the church something different here second okay the the interesting that the very next thing that they hear after seeing something different about how cyril's engaging is healing yeah so i guess the question for lavina too is that does the grocery shop owner and do they go to the church um no no they're unbelievers uh where does she say she say right. that uh, they're the same church. building as they're unbelievers yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, and, uh, do you know the grocery shop owner of Rajesh stores? I guess that's not really all that important. No, because uh, they live in the same building. So they're okay. I missed all of that. I was aware of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in the next, so something different about pastor Cyril and then, yeah, they're unbelievers. Um, and then the very next thing is 
people let's just let's just look at the rajesh family as a metaphor okay local people with some level of influence right they own the stores um and that don't know jesus but they're in in the in the in the dream they're in the church so they're you wouldn't normally find them in the church so there's something different so we look at them as a metaphor so two so, different things first you, Cyril wears sandals. Second, somebody yeah. who doesn't go is there. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Someone who doesn't normally go to the church is there. Yeah. So, um, so this the people are a metaphor. Yes. There's people that don't know Jesus that were go are going to be impacted. So, because the first, like you have to think of the second scene flowing from the first scene. Right. First scene, something shifted on a leadership level. There's more, it's like, it's, it's more casual, open, open right. relaxed, open, yeah. all this stuff. And it's, and it's yeah. flowing from pastor Cyril next scene. People that don't know Jesus are encountering his proud power and presence. Right. And it's happening in the context of the church. Right. So, and people and the church isn't aware of it. These, yeah, that's right. These new yeah. things that have changed, these new things that are changing right now about uh, on a leadership level are impacting how people are encountering Jesus encountering Jesus in the community and and it's getting beyond the context of just the people that you know at church Jesus is moving okay yeah healing is coming to people exactly it's coming to people and one of the catalysts is what's changed on a leadership level this openness this this kind of dressed down version of Cyril mm -hmm. um less formal more rela relaxed and relational um, and that it's Cyril's relaxed and relational anyway, but there's a, there's a shift. And so, and then, um, the other pastor, Ben bends down to check the feet and there's blood on his hands. So God's redeeming what the pastors do, what the leadership does. That's yeah. blood on the hand. Blood right. is a redemption and relationally God's redeeming, right? Cause he's, re he's reaching down with his hand to check his foot. God's redeeming the work of the hands of the pastors in the local community and it's bringing healing. Like, so what, what, so imagine that, right? Or think about this change with Cyril change with Ben, her husband, both the two pastors of the church. So God's redeeming the work of the hands. God's redeeming the way that the person walks and it's bringing healing to the people all around them. And they don't even know that it's bringing healing. It just is because he's healing to the community. It's yeah. Nice yeah. It's bringing healing to the community. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting that like, Cyril doesn't even know about it. It's just happened. Yeah, right? right. And I don't, I don't know that that's His openness that's, is, is, has a, has ramifications that he's yeah. not even aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. His openness has ramifications. So, so the owners of the Rajesh stores aren't so much, the people that you know in the building, they're people that are not connected to Jesus already, whether they're in the community or not, right? There's people that go to church that don't know Jesus very well. Um, and, and they're being impacted. And when the, so if, does he have cancer? One, the guy, I guess that's a, a question to ask. And if he doesn't, then it just reinforces the point that it's a metaphor. Um, but the the thing that's healed is his walk right it's his feet right. so yeah. by by Cyril demonstrating this openness in his walk others people are others are being their walk is being are being healed as well and um and it's redeeming what the work of Ben's hands what he does what he puts his yeah. hands to what the leadership puts their hands to right. so it's a it really is a beautiful dream but it's all flowing from this place of oh he's Things, something's changed about Cyril and how he walks. Um, yeah. yeah, not in real life. Okay. Yep. Yeah. In the dream, yeah, not in real. He doesn't have cancer in real life. Yeah, exactly. Again, just driving home the point that it's a, that they're they represent people that don't know Jesus and need his need his touch and his healing power, and that's in the church and outside of the church. Um, and isn't it, yeah, isn't it interesting that the dreams that we've been looking at today? Um, tend to speak to real life situations. Not every dream does that. Yeah, that's right. Some dreams are are more metaphorical. The theme. Them, and although there's metaphors in all of these dreams, they're speaking to things that are act that people are actually engaged in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, so the the word the name Rajesh means ruler of kings. Hmm. So the guy who own the guy whose store is the ruler of kings. It's just another layer of the metaphor for um, people that need healing but are maybe disconnected from the intimacy yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Cool. Great dream, Lavina. Yeah. Yeah. So we we just bless uh, Cyril and Ben to to navigate the season they're in and the yeah. church to navigate the season they're in. And Lavina has the dream because it's a prayer assignment. It's yeah. it's given her intercessory insight into what's happening in the in the community. Right. That you that you would know how to pray for your husband, how to pray for the other leaders in the church, and how to pray for the people. That healing would happen, that openness would happen, that this this kind of dressed down version of Cyril would be, um, uh, yeah. Good. Let's do this one more. People would see it. We're, yeah. We're Chris's good. dream. Awesome. All right. So Chris is back at um, an old his old cessationist, cessationist church for a concert event. Desert, I mean deserts. Desserts are on the table um, upon entering. There's a worship leader from his current church, I'm assuming, leading worship there and singing her other songs. His daughter is running around uh, playing, at, and his wife and, and he are worshiping. Jack Deere gets up to speak, and he's shocked because that would never happen there. And he's enjoying worship and seeing his wife worship, enjoying people's faces as they see their daughter um, run around. He realizes at one point that he's let his daughter run too long without knowing where she is and begins to look for her and to grab her in joy eventually. I like, yeah, I like that he clarifies that. Yeah. It was a very <laughs> joyful thing, yeah. So feelings in the dream are joy of his uh, seeing his daughter running around and um, he says worshiping, but also the shock at Jack Deere speaking and the freeway people are worshiping. So let's, let me just say one thing about Jack Deere before we get going is that Jack Deere is originally more cessationist. Yep. And then encountered something that transformed him and has written about it. So yeah, quite uh, dramatically. So he, yeah. he is connected to a cessationist way of viewing the world that has yeah. been transformed. So it's that's a that's a cool thing. That's a good transition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a good connection. He wrote surprised by the voice of God, surprised right. by the power of God. Right. Yeah, cuz and and he, and yeah, he was, he a, was, you know, he was a, a instructor at Dallas Theological Seminary. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he's still around. Jack Deere's a great person to listen to. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I, and this, I think this dream is super simple. There's not, there's actually not a lot of metaphor here. Right. Right. Again, it, yet again. <laughs> it is. It's essentially God giving you a new perspective on a place where it's like, the memory is how the spirit was not welcomed, right? Yeah. Cessationist church, the, the right. memory where it didn't seem like there was this vibrant, dynamic, uh, worshipful display, welcome of the Holy Spirit, all that kind of right. stuff. Wonderful to see you, Renee. Um, so, uh, yeah, God's giving you a whole new perspective for how to look back and see that and see that he's been at work in other places where it seemed like uh, maybe they don't see the work. Yeah. Maybe they don't know the work and he's going, he's giving you like, you're like, you know, like, Oh my goodness. I can't believe they'd ever bring Jack Deere here. I think the Lord's letting you see that he's been working in the people and that maybe now I'm, I don't, I don't, the dream doesn't show us what your, what your experience was in the cessationist church. But based on the dream, I'm going to guess that it was a pretty dry place to be because of how surprised you are that um, that there's a how things have, that there's freedom. Yes. And and so I don't, I don't it's not like a call to go back to the cessationist church or anything like that. It's the Lord giving you insight that this is a totally different way to see what's happening there and what's happened there. So anything to add to that, Dad? Yeah, that. It's the joy part. Yes. So if we if we get back to uh, how Jim Wilder, because uh, this fits right into this thing, uh, defines joy. It's that it's the it's being in the presence of one 
who is happy to be with you. Yeah. It, in other words, that look back and forth at the eyes, I'm, I'm joyful yeah. because I'm happy to be with you. And that, well, that yeah. creates something in my brain that makes, uh, makes us begin to um, engage with one another in, in the way we're supposed to. And joy is the essential component that in, the, in creation, Yahweh and humans are to engage with. The, the joy of being together, of connecting with one another. And in this dream, it's your daughter who is spreading joy by being around, being in a place she's happy to be. Yeah. And and celebrating that. And, yeah. and you are engaged in that. So there's just this sense um, in this dream where the surprise is that's that things are different than they than you thought they would be. And what the result is that there is joy because of the change. Right. And so I, I just, I look at that and I think, um, what's God up to? Yeah, that's in right. Your old relationships. Yeah. Does it mean it's the church itself or is it, you know, churches are based, built on relationships. Yeah, we that's hope. right. We right. hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know what's going on in those old relationships. Now, you know, I wonder if there's a there's an element to where a a cessationist church. Now, this is where having having a sit down with Chris and being able to pull apart what his experience like was yeah. like at the cessationist church. Reading into that a little bit, the yeah. cessationist church tends to be well. We right. have the corner of the market on theology. It tends right? to be, yeah. They tend and it's, they, and it's and it's based over against fear. like the charismatic guys don't know anything, right? Right. Right. And, and it's it's more of a doctrine based um approach yeah. to faith and understanding and it, there, you know, there's relationship. It's not you know, it, you can't say either or. Well, and it's and so what not. happens is it it gets turned into an either or because of the dynamic, right? right? And I wonder if there's an element of Chris discovering that it's not an either or that I can love rich theology and encounter the Holy spirit at the same time yeah. that I don't have to do either or, and I can find great joy in the expression of both. Yeah. Right. And yeah, cause it's his current worship leader and his old cessationist church, right? right. One, one yeah, going together. dry, stuffy theology, one yeah. going vibrant display of worship. Back there. Actually, those things can come be, now, it, now it's over here. Yeah. And it great. And it creates great joy in being able to see all of this. I love uh, what Karen said down there. She said, she's ob he's observing the way people are having a shift in their perspective. And he's, it seems to me that as the, as the dreamer, he's also having a shift in his perspective. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah I don't, it doesn't have to be either or it can be both. And yeah. So yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. dream. So Chris, yeah. we just bless your journey right. of knowing the father's heart and encountering him. And, and being a, a husband and a father and all of that, that that would go deeper and deeper and deeper every day. And you'd find more and more joy in celebrating uh, your family and the way Jesus is moving in your community. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to right. thank all you guys for jumping yeah. in with us today. We we had fun. And um, we're going to bring this to an end here. That's right. Um, blessings on all of you. May your dream life increase. That's right. And may you meet Jesus in your dreams. That's right. And and may you know, uh, my my passion is that we would know uh, not only his presence, but how his presence flows into the world around us by our encounters with him in our dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bless uh, later. Yeah. Thanks again. Uh, we appreciate your your engagement. Oh, oh and Josh, uh, if someone wants to give to win ministry. Yeah, I was just going to say, we're given that we're, we have we'll have one more live stream yeah. before the end of the year, depending on what day that last Friday. I haven't looked at that last Friday la lands in um, December. Um, so if you know if you're of a mind to support what we do, um, support uh, Aaron and I, my wife and I, my dad, the ministry, all the stuff that we're doing in terms of training and training people in um, following God uh, and being touched by His presence. Um, then there's a link you can donate, uh, you know, if you're considering year-end donations, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
you can donate there as well. So we would appreciate that. Absolutely. And, and we've got a couple things coming out in the next week or so. Actually, we'll have, I think we'll have two pretty big announcements for resources we're putting out, hopefully in the so next watch week. Watch so your inbox. Watch your inbox. Watch the social media. And, um, yes, there's, wow. there's a couple things coming down the pipe that you might want to take a look at. Sounds so, good. yep. All right. Well, blessings on you all. Thanks for jumping with us. That's um, right. That's we'll right. See you. We'll see you, uh, see you later. On the 29th, probably. It'll be the 29th. Oh, right. There we go. There we go. Wonderful. All right. All right. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody.